Good morning. Good morning. Happy New Year to you all. Um, I have uh, moved into Sault Ste. Marie on Friday. So yes, as you know, I have been uh, traveling back and forth, uh, filling in, and uh, that is exactly what I'm still doing. Um, I'm, I'm here as long as needed. And uh, we'll see how long that, that is, but uh, I know that uh, until the Lord comes, He may come in 2018, that would be the thing that, yeah. Uh, let's just say, as long as the, as the Lord wills, I'm very happy to be here, and uh, I'm waiting to see what God has in store for us in 2018, as we wait upon Him and trust, trust Him. Um, greetings from my wife, Maria Lena. She is uh, still in working in uh, Toronto Solid Church, and so um, she has year-end stuff and uh, the auditor's reports and so on, so she'll be coming up later, but she misses me already. <laughs> so that's a good sign. And, uh, uh, and greetings from her. Um, as, as I was um, thinking of, of this year and what God might have in store, um, the, the thing that came to, um, to my mind the most strongly is that um, we need His blessing. We need the blessing of God for us individually. We need His blessing for our church, our assembly, and uh, our entire life. And that's what I'd like to speak uh, this morning briefly about the blessing of God. It was very important for Israel. They, they wanted God's blessing upon them. And the Lord promised them his blessing. Uh, you're familiar with Deuteronomy chapter 28, which says all these blessings will come upon you and overtake you and so on. I'll speak about that a bit later on, but I, I want to take Proverbs chapter 10, verse 22 as our theme text. Proverbs 10 and 22, which says, It is the blessing of the Lord that makes rich, and he adds no sorrow to it. Now there are two translations for this verse. This is the most common one in the English language. It is the blessing of the Lord that makes rich and he adds no sorrow to it. You know, these, the, these uh, texts that we have come from various manuscript sources. And uh, the one that's, uh, that the Finnish Bible comes from and some of the English translators and commentators have also taken that first version which sounds like this. It is the Lord's blessing that makes a person rich, and hard work adds nothing to it. So there are these two endings that both are, are, both are true, both are, are uh, uh, right, but there are different sources that they get these interpretations from. So um, I look briefly at both of them. But the first part of it, which is I mean, I'm interested in, is the blessing of the Lord. And it says, makes rich. Now Proverbs, uh, because they are Proverbs, they, they contain um, expressions that um, are open to some translation, some interpretation. So I, I don't mean by, by uh, the blessing of the Lord making us rich and getting into the prosperity gospel. Uh, that verse uh, can be used for that application, but riches, according to this verse and the Bible as a whole, speaks more than just material blessings. The richness here speaks, of our, speaks to our whole life. The Lord's desire is that through His blessing, He will make our lives rich in many ways. Not only material bank account rich, but in many, many ways. The blessing of the Lord, His favor, His goodwill, His desire to give what is best. Romans 8.28 that uh, uh, applies to, to that where, um, which Rudy mentioned already, already earlier. But it's not only God's blessing. In other words, say, I give you my blessing, go for it. But the blessing of God is also his participation, his interaction in, in, our, our, in our life, and, and his part in our life, which makes our way successful and, pro and prosperous. God promised wonderful things for Israel, and, I'm going to read something, just a little bit of Deuteronomy 28, verses 2 and 4, 2 to 4. And it says, 
All these blessings will come upon you and overtake you if you obey the Lord your God. Blessed you shall be in the city, and blessed shall you be in the country. Blessed shall you be your offspring of your body, and the produce of your ground, and the offspring of your beasts, the increase of your herd, and the young of your flock. And then it goes on to talk about victory over your enemies, and, uh, and uh, a blessing and uh, an honor to your life. Those are wonderful things, and I've read this verse many times through my lifetime, and thought, Lord, give me those blessings. I'll just I'll be happy to have your blessing upon my entire life. But then there's a condition. And we're familiar with this condition in Deuteronomy 28 and verse 1, which says, If you fully obey the Lord your God and carefully follow all his commands I give you today, the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations on earth. And all these blessings will come upon you. And it goes on. That was the promise to Israel. And uh, what happened? They weren't able to keep them. And uh, that's where it usually stalls as well for us. We read these verses and say, Lord, I'm going to try and keep your commandments and I'm going to do what you, what you instruct me to do. And uh, it just doesn't seem to work. I came upon this truth and I want to leave it with you. And if you get nothing else from this sermon this morning, please take this with you. This is the proper way for the New Testament believer to read this verse. And in fact, read the entire chapter. The way that you and I, as New Testament believers, you know that you are a New Testament believer, right? We're not Old Testament people. We're not under the law as, as they were in, in the Old Testament. And so the way it read to Israel was, was one way. The way it reads to you today, is this. Since Jesus fully obeyed and observed to do all God's commands, therefore the Lord our God will set us on high above all nations on the earth, and all these blessings will come upon us and overtake us, because Jesus fully obeyed the voice of the Lord God. And we are joined heirs with Jesus through faith in his finished work. These blessings that are outlined here in Deuteronomy 28 do not come to you because you are able to obey God's voice and keep His commands. They will come upon you by faith. They will come upon me by faith in what Jesus did. And because He fully obeyed the Lord our God and fully kept all of His commandments Therefore, by faith, these blessings come upon those of us who are walking by faith. Take that with you for the coming year. And expect God's blessing to be upon you as well as upon our church and our assembly. And I don't only mean bank account blessings. If that's all it was, all we have to do is win the lottery and that would be it. God would give us that. But, you know, that's not the best way to... Uh, operate. So it is by faith, not by works, that these blessings come upon you and overtake you. Not by works. It is by faith. Through the Holy Spirit. Walking in the Spirit. Walking by faith. These blessings will come upon you. And that's why I'm very encouraged to see what God will do in 2018. May 2018 be the best year of your life. How many would just like to have that? 2018 to be the best year of your life. I certainly want that, and I'm certainly expecting that. Why? Because Jesus fulfilled all these commandments. Therefore, these blessings will come upon you and overtake you. In the Old Testament, it was the law. They had to keep those commandments. In the New Testament, we accept them by faith because Jesus already kept them, all of them, to the very, very end. And his sacrifice, as we celebrated communion earlier, his sacrifice on the cross locked it. It was locked at that point. Nothing can be taken away from it. He has completed the work completely. And that is why, by faith, we can accept these blessings. 
And so that's what I'm talking about this morning, these blessings of God. They, uh, the blessings of God makes rich. This means more than material wealth. In the Old Testament, it was material wealth for the most part, but not only there, even, even the wicked prospered in the Old Testament. It wasn't as, as though it was only the Israel that was prosperous. David was envious that, uh, of the, of the uh, prosperity of the wicked. But in the New Testament, we generally apply it to spiritual life. And I think it, in, it includes that, but I believe the rich is talked about here. The blessings of God makes rich. It applied to the entire life. Your entire life is blessed. Not only the bank account. Yes, materially. I think you, 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 we can expect to have our needs met. We can also expect spiritual blessings. We can also expe expect God's blessing upon our family, upon our relationships, upon our work. Every, every area of life uh, are, are applied here. Friendships. School, wherever we are, we can expect blessing which will lead to prosperity and success. You know, I was, um, some, 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 maybe a couple of years ago, uh, we were invited to uh, an elderly couple's home. There was some festival or some reason, whether it was a birthday or an anniversary or, or, uh, or whatever it was, the, uh, the elderly couple invited the church members there, and about, about 20 people went to their home. And uh, I uh, always remember the, the, the man of the house, the, the elderly gentleman, uh, he made a small speech. And, uh, and he was moved by his speech. It was uh, like, a, like a sort of a lump in his throat. He, it, this is what he said. He says, it, it is amazing to me that we, my wife and I, would have so many friends. And such good people. How can it be that we are part of such a fellowship? And he was he was amazed by that. As as Christians, that they had twenty good friends. And I I looked around the room and I said, you know, every one of these people really will say they are good friends of this elderly couple. That is a rich. That that is a that is something valuable. It's not in the bank account. It's a richness that God gives. To his people. It's a blessing. It is a blessing. If you could look around this room and say, these people are my friends. You're rich. Many people in Sault Ste. Marie today might have two or three friends that they can say, these are my friends. We've got about half a dozen, well, more than half a dozen, but a dozen. And they're not all here. There's always a, this section over here is the Finnish people. They're all your friends as well. So there are riches. Blessing of God makes rich. And he adds no sorrow. Now, um, the, uh, Proverb 30 and verse 8 and 9 says this, Give me neither poverty nor riches. It's like a prayer. Feed me with the food that is my portion, that I not be full and deny you and say, Who is the Lord? Or that I not be in want and steal and profane the name of my God. So the, the, the writer here is saying he wants the right amount. He's praying for the right amount. The correct amount, not too much, not too little. The Apostle Paul also writes in the, in the New Testament how, how, how he had learned to live with plenty and he also learned to live with little. He was blessed in both areas. God blessed him with much at times. God blessed him with a little at times. Both were good. I remember this man who was saying, I've, I've also been blessed with much and much with, I'm blessed with little. And he said, much is better. Well, not necessarily, not always. Anyway, this, this verse, and I want to mention these two, two aspects of it. The blessing of the Lord makes rich, and he adds no sorrow to it. That might be in your Bible. That's the way you might read. Blessing of God makes rich, and he adds no sorrow to it. Um, that's a good, a good translation, and it's true. Uh, riches that are gained without God's blessing don't necessarily have God's blessing, uh, don't have the blessing out of that. It, it doesn't mean those who are wrongly gained. Um, riches, riches are not always a blessing. Um, there was a, 
situation in Toronto just recently. One of the richest men in Toronto was, was found in, in their swing pool area, hanging with his wife. Him and his wife were hung, hung, hanging there. And the police were investigating, was it a murder or was it a uh, murder-suicide? They don't really know for sure which it was. But anyway, the richest couple in, the, in all of Toronto, or one of them, is a multi-billionaire. So, but then again, money gained in the wrong way, through the mafia, extortion, through drug cartels, robbers, thieves, swindlers. Uh, you know, you really don't see happiness in that kind of lifestyle. It's more like a, more like a fearful of what's going to happen. Joy is not a part of that life. What about lotto winners? You know, you might be praying, Lord, I'd like to have that lotto, lotterio. Boy, that'd be a real, real wonderful thing. You know, they're not cheaters, they're not swindlers, but I don't really know how much real joy is gained by all those riches. If you want it today, I'd be after you for a tithe. Um, if your family knew you won it, they'd be after you for a portion. Your friends would all want a uh, chunk of it. Um, I, see, I, I see a lot of trouble coming with who gets what and who gets how much. Who gets all those new cars? And, you know, friend, friends and relationships would be strained. And uh, some of the stories of these lotto winners aren't that happy. Um, so the Lord's blessing adds no sorrow to it. But I'm looking at the second translation. And, and this is the other manuscript source that comes from. And it goes like this. The blessing of the Lord makes rich and a man's own labor adds nothing to it. I kind of like that one, and some of the commentators are, are leaning that way, that this may be the better translation of, of this particular proverb. A man's own work adds nothing to it. The blessing of the Lord is what makes you rich. Your own labor cannot go beyond that. It can't add to it. What somebody might labor hard for to receive, God can add it with his blessing, without the labor. Someone works hard and gets something, another person is walking in the blessing of God and he gets the same amount. The hard work can't measure up to what God can give. His blessing. And this is a great truth. We cannot truly succeed to a special level without the blessing of God. Listen to Psalm 127, 1 and 2, which I'm sure you know. Psalm 127, verses 1 and 2. Unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain who build it. Unless the Lord guards the city, the watchman keeps awake in vain. It is in vain for you to rise up early, to retire late, to eat the bread of painful labors. For he gives to his beloved even in his sleep. That's the blessing of God. He gives to you even while you are sleeping. Now, this doesn't mean that we just have to sleep and be lazy. All of Scripture would oppose that truth. And that's not what it means. That's not what it says here. So, this one man said, he, he's not afraid of hard work. I don't mind hard work at all. I'm not afraid of it at all. So I can even sleep beside it. Well, this is not what we're talking about. We're not talking about sleeping when you should be working. But I like what William Carey said, this uh, pioneer missionary to India. He said, it's a quote that is often heard. He said, attempt great things for God and expect great things from God. Attempt great things for God. Have a high vision. Aim high. Yes, that's not, there's nothing wrong with aiming high. High. But then also expect God's blessing and his portion to what you are aiming for. Expect great things uh, from God. Attempt great things for God. Expect great things from God. You know, if, if I'm a, a good worker, 
a skilled, a skilled laborer, I can do something well. I'm sure many of you are good workmen. Some of you who are retired have been good workers. I think your employers were sad the day you retired, some of you. And uh, some of you young people, you know, you're prime candidates for the workforce. When they see that you're a Christian who does their work diligently, you have no trouble getting jobs. If some employer doesn't want you, ask for a letter from me, I'll write them a letter, and then they'll take you. Because I know that as, as Christians, we, we work, we do our job well. And so we should. But I can succeed naturally with that kind of labor. I can succeed naturally. I can expect some good things to happen. But I can never, my work can never be extraordinary. It can never have that special level that the blessing of God gives. You know, as, as I'm thinking of this church and, and, and the coming year, you know, we can go on in the ordinary. And God will be with us and we'll see ordinary things. But then if we realize that by faith there's a blessing upon my life, then we can expect something extraordinary, something special. Not necessarily to touch only our fellowship, but even to touch the entire city and various populations in the city with God's blessing. That is what His blessing brings. Takes you beyond what you can normally and naturally do. We do what we naturally can do. Then God can bring that extra blessing that takes it beyond that. That's what I'm talking about here when I'm talking about the, 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 the blessing of God. My work in the natural can be ordinary, but it can never be extraordinary. It's the blessing of God that makes it extraordinary, gives it that special blessing. And it is the will of God to bless. Let's be assured of that. He wants your life to be blessed. That's the will of God. Because, and, and also he knows what is best. And he knows what level, what blessing to give at any given time. He knows what is best for us. I like the story of the, of the Chinese farmer. He had one son and one horse. Kind of a poor farmer, what you say? I guess he had a house, might have even had a wife, I don't know. But anyway, he had, these were his riches, his one horse and one son. One day, they forgot to latch the gate on the horse uh, corral, and the horse ran away. And it was gone for a day or two. And all the neighbors said, bad luck. What bad luck? You've lost your horse. The farmer said, how do you know it's bad luck? And they said, well, it just seems to be bad luck. Well, wouldn't you know it? One night, the corral was open, and the horse came back. But not only did it come back alone, it brought 12 wild horses with it. And they were all in the corral. The farmer snuck out and locked the gate, and he had, 12, he had 13 horses now instead of one. It wasn't bad luck after all that his horse ran away. But the, 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 the son, the one son that he had, went to um, break the horses. I think that's a cowboy term, isn't it? He had to break the horses. He had to, he had to ride on them until they stopped bucking and then they were tame, good for working purposes or whatever. Well, wouldn't you know it, one of the horses was extremely aggressive and violent and he bucked and threw the boy off over the fence and he landed on his leg and broke his leg. And again he's hobbling around on crutches and the neighbor said, bad luck that you're your son, your one and only son, has a broken leg. The farmer said, how do you know it's bad luck? Well, wouldn't you know it, about a week later, a Chinese general came through conscripting young men to his army and taking them to war. The son was spared because his leg was broken. <laughs> Aren't you glad you got a broken leg at times? If you're, if, if you're in those days when they're conscripting young men to, to the army? Well, how do we know it's luck? bad luck. Well, God knows what's best for us. And as, as we walk in His blessing and we receive those blessings that we accept by faith because of what Jesus did, we can expect good things to happen. Just this week, or, uh, yeah, this week, you know, Maria Elena, my wife, um, she was asking for a car. She said, you're taking our car up to Sault Ste. Marie. How am I going to get to work and back? I said, well, I'll arrange a car for you. And I asked a friend of mine who had an extra car, and he said, yeah, sure, she can take it. 
I'll, I'll, I'll bring it to her. When you're gone, I'll bring it to her, and you, she, she can use that car. Okay, fine and dandy. Mine knew this. She was happy about that. Well, guess what happened? About uh, earlier this week, I drove here on fr Friday. I'd say about Monday. Marianne was saying, um, what about the car? Am I going to get the car? And it was about 10 o'clock in the evening. She's already getting ready to, for bed. And uh, I said, Marilena, do you need that car now? <laughs> <laughs> she said, well, no, I don't need it right now. But uh, like, well, I said, you know, when you need the car, you'll have the car. This friend was trustworthy. He, he'll give you the car. When you need the car, you'll have the car. You know, I wonder how many times God looks at us and he says, yes, I promised you many blessings. I promised you to prosper and success. Not because of you, but because of what Jesus did. He's promised those blessings by faith. And we're saying, Lord, where are they? Lord, I need them. I'd like to have them now. And the Lord said, do you need them now? You might not need them right now. Uh, but when you need them, he has promised. You can bank on it. You can go to the bank on, on God's promises. As, as we're walking by faith and through the Spirit. The best example I can find in the scripture is from Joshua. As, as he was leading the people of Israel into the promised land. Um, they, they came to the Jordan River. And they had camped on the other side. And, they had, and the Lord was instructing Joshua to go across. And, uh, he's, and the Lord said, tomorrow you will cross over this Jordan. Now it was harvest time. The, the uh, river was overflowing its banks. It was, it was uh, really uh, flowing. And Joshua instructed them, the priests will take the Ark of the Covenant upon their shoulders. And then he said, and the, and the people were to follow a certain distance behind them. And he told the priests, okay, go. We're crossing the Jordan. And so the priests are walking towards the Jordan, carrying the Ark. And I'm sure they're looking ahead, saying, okay, there's a flood going on. It's really flowing. Uh, but we've got 100 meters to go. We've got 100 meters. God's going to perform a miracle in this 100 meters. They walk a bit closer and they get to about 10 meters. And they start to walk slower. Say, Lord, what's going to happen here? This, uh, this water is flowing full speed and uh, how are we going to get across? They keep walking and walking and walking. They get to about a meter away. And the, the river's flowing. What's going to happen? They're going to keep walking. And you know, the moment their feet touched the water, when their feet touched the water, God wasn't a second too early, but he wasn't also a second too late. When the, their, the feet of the priests touched the water bank, uh, flowing at, at, the, uh, at the shore, they began to dam up on the north, on the uh, upstream, and the water washed down the lower stream, and they walked across, and the entire nation walked across uh, the riverbed. God wasn't too early, but he wasn't too late. And as we walk by faith and trusting in those blessings that Jesus has already gained for us, we can expect God to meet every need when we need it. And I'm glad sometimes he meets it earlier. I'm glad it's not always at the last minute. But I've seen it in the last minute sometimes as well. But God is trust trustworthy. And therefore, let us with confidence, look for what blessings the Lord has for us in this coming new year. And uh, it's His work. We can't do it. Natural, our own abilities are just not going to do it. But the blessing of God is what makes our life rich in, the, in every area. It makes the life of our assembly rich through His presence and His blessing. Uh, upon us in the coming year. Amen. I'm happy about God's promises, and so should we all be. And let's see what He has for us. Let us pray. Father, we give you glory and praise and honor. We are no better than Israel, we're no better than the Old Testament people. But Lord, we are your people, we are your Israel of the New Testament. Thank you, Lord, that you have called us, each one individually, out of darkness into your light. And Lord, you have promised these blessings to be, to be ours. And uh, not because of our goodness. And Lord, you know the measure that you will bless us. Not more 
that we can stand not less than we need. But Lord, we look for your hand upon this assembly and upon our individual lives in the coming year. Because of what Jesus did, Lord, you fully obeyed the Father's commands and heard his voice perfectly. Thank you, Lord. Help us to walk in that faith and in that blessing with thanksgiving, giving you glory and praise and honor every step of the way. We ask in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. God bless you until we meet again. I think we'll ask for a testimony at the beginning, and uh, maybe I'll be all right if I get one here at the end. Uh, <clears throat> you know, this, this, this message uh, uh, fits in very well. Um, Darlene is uh, nearly at the point where she's going to, she's going to, you're going to see her here in the church. We don't know when that's going to be yet, but she is very close. And uh, there were many times when we were, when we kind of wondered, but every step along the way, God was shown His mercy and His grace. And uh, they told her it would be about a year, so she's got a little ways to go yet. If it, she got away the uh, a year, but but uh, for them to take away the medications, but we're thinking that, and she is, uh, that uh, well, she told me the other day I could go to church. She said, "I could. I, I, I have. Uh, I now think I have the strength that I could. I could last at least through one service. But uh, we have we have seen the Lord's hand uh, in it every step of the way. Uh, yeah, it was it was very difficult at, at times, but." Uh, but we're, we're very grateful and thankful unto the Lord for what, what has happened, what is, what is still happening. And, and uh, there's a couple of problems that she wants solved yet before she, she will show herself. But expect it to happen one day because God is good. Hallelujah. To God be the glory and the praise and the honor. The Lord be with you. God bless you.